Mornan is a picturesque village located on the southern coast of Cornwall, England. Known for its stunning landscapes, ancient woodlands and proximity to the Helford River, Mornan exudes natural beauty and historical significance. The area around St Mornan Church is particularly noted for its ley lines, which are believed by some to be the paths of mystical energy. These lines, coupled with the ancient earthworks and the church's historical significance, contribute to an atmosphere that many find conducive to paranormal experiences. The churchyard and the surrounding woods have long been a focal point for legend and eerie tales, and the Owlman sightings are perhaps the most intriguing of all of them. On a misty Easter weekend in 1976, the quiet village of Mornan in Cornwall was forever marked by an encounter that still chills the hearts of those who recall it. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the ancient stones of Mornan Old Church, Two young girls, June and Vicky Melling, wandered near the churchyard, unaware that their lives were about to change forever. From the gathering twilight, a monstrous figure emerged. It was a grotesque blend of man and beast, cloaked in dark, shaggy feathers that rustled ominously in the evening breeze. Its eyes, enormous and glowing with an eerie red, pierced through the darkness, fixing on the terrified girls with an almost hypnotic intensity. June and Vicky stood rooted to the spot, their breath catching in their throats as the creature's wings unfurled with a terrifying grace. These were no ordinary wings. They were vast, leathery appendages that seemed to stretch out endlessly, casting a shadow that swallowed the entire churchyard, the creature's head resembling a giant owl, but with a twisted, almost human malevolence, tilted slightly, as if studying them. For a moment, time stood still. The air was thick with an almost palpable fear. And then, with a sudden bone-chilling screech, the creature launched itself into the air, its wings beating with a power that sent dust and leaves swirling around the petrified girls. They watched in horror as it soared into the sky, disappearing into the encroaching darkness, leaving only their ragged breath and the distant echo of its unearthly cry. The Melling family, gripped by terror, cut their holiday short and fled back to Preston, but the legend of the Owlman had already taken root. This was just the beginning. On July the 3rd of 1976, two 14-year-old girls, Sally Chapman and Barbara Perry, encountered the same terrifying figure whilst camping in the woods near Mornan Church. They describe it as a large, owl-like figure with red glowing eyes, and pincer-like feet. Their accounts mirrored the Melling sisters' experience, reinforcing the notion of this being's existence. Tony Doc Shields, a local paranormal researcher, separated the two girls and had each of them draw a picture of what she had seen. The two pictures were dissimilar enough to dispel suggestions of collusion, but shared enough points in common to be considered significant evidence. Both girls made brief additional notes underneath their pictures. Sally wrote, I saw this monster bird last night. It stood like a man and then it flew up through the trees. It is as big as a man. Its eyes are red and shine brightly. Barbara wrote, Birdman monster, seen on the 3rd of July, quite late at night, but not quite dark. Red eyes, a black mouth, it was very big with great big wings and black claws, feathers grey. The two girls agreed on most points, although Sally thought that Barbara had possibly drawn the wings slightly wrong, but Sally also described their encounter. She said it was like a big owl with pointed ears as big as a man. The eyes were red and glowing, and at first I thought it was someone dressed up playing a joke, trying to scare us. I laughed at it. We both did, and then it went up in the air and we both screamed. When it went up, you could see its feet were like pincers. Her friend added, it's true, it was horrible. A nasty owl face with big ears and big red eyes. It was covered in grey feathers and the claws on its feet were black. It just flew up and 
disappeared into the trees. The next day, the 4th of July, yet another young girl, Jane Greenwood, along with her sister, saw the Owl Man, and Jane described what they saw in a letter to the local newspaper. It was a Sunday morning, and the place was in the trees near Mornan Church, above the rocky beach. It was in the trees, standing like a full-grown man, but the legs bent backwards like a bird. It saw us, and quickly jumped up and rose up through the trees. My sister and I saw it very clearly before it rose up. It had red slanting eyes and a very large mouth. The feathers are silvery grey, and so are his body and legs. The feet are big and black, like crab's claws. The owl man seemed to disappear around 76 as quickly as it had appeared, but then in 78, a 16-year-old girl saw a monster like a devil flying up through the trees near Old Mornan Church, and on August the 2nd, three young French girls also saw him near the church. They were frightened by something very big, like a great big furry bird. It was white, with a gaping mouth and big round eyes. The Owl Man is not an isolated phenomenon. Around the world, eerie tales of winged humanoid creatures haunt the annals of paranormal lore. One of the most famous, of course, being the Mothman of Point Pleasant in West Virginia. First sighted in 1966, the Mothman was described as a tall, dark figure with large glowing eyes and huge wings. Like the Owl Man, it was often seen around an old structure. In this case, it was then an abandoned TNT plant. In Hythe, Kent, in England, there is the tale of the Hythe Mothman, as it has become known, sighted in 1962. This is where John Flaxton and his friends encountered a headless, winged creature near Sandling Park. They described it as human-sized, completely black, with bat-like wings and webbed feet. This creature appeared after they had observed a strange, hovering light that seemed to follow them. And you can watch a video about the Hythe Mothman on my channel, funnily enough. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. In Freiburg, Germany, there is the tale of the Freiburg Schrieker, a monstrous winged entity that's said to have driven miners away from their work with its blood-curdling screams in the 70s. Miners described it as having a humanoid shape with large bat-like wings, and its presence was enough to halt mining operations because of the fear that came with it. Similarly, in Latin America, the legend of the Lechuza, a witch who can transform into a giant owl. It shares striking similarities with the Owl Man. The Lechuza is said to have large glowing eyes and an imposing wingspan, much like the descriptions of the Owl Man. In Russia, Mothman-like sightings were reported before the 1999 apartment bombings in Moscow. Witnesses described seeing a large, dark figure with glowing red eyes again and wings eerily similar to the Mothman and Owlman reports. Even in recent years, there have been numerous reports of a Mothman-like creature in Chicago. Since 2017, dozens of witnesses have reported seeing a large flying humanoid with glowing red eyes around the city, particularly near Lake Michigan. These sightings have drawn significant media attention and sparked widespread speculation about their origin and nature. In Mexico, during the 2009 swine flu pandemic, residents in the town of La Junta claimed to have seen a creature similar to the Mothman, which they referred to as the Man-Bat. This creature was described as having a humanoid shape, large wings and, you guessed it, red eyes. These sightings coincided with the outbreak, leading some to believe that the creature was an omen of the coming pandemic. But what could this Owl Man have been? Theories abound, of course, ranging from the plausible to the fantastical. Was it an escaped exotic bird? So some suggest that the Owl Man might have been such, you know. These birds have got impressive wingspans and some large-eyed ones that reflect light and silent flight capabilities. It could explain the sightings of a large, silent, winged creature with glowing eyes. It could be an undiscovered species. A cryptid, in other words. One that occasionally surfaces in remote locations. The owl man's pincer-like feet and seemingly intelligent gaze could hint at a species adapted in ways that we don't yet understand. 
Was it a tulpa? Some speculate that the Owlman might be one of these, an entity created by intense human belief and imagination. Tibetan monks claim to be able to create tulpas, and this concept suggests that the collective fear and fascination in Mornan might have given rise to a physical manifestation of the Owlman, a being born from the depths of human consciousness, as it were. But why would you be afraid of the Owlman before you had seen him? What about folklore and that old favourite, mass hysteria? The psychological impact of local folklore and media coverage cannot be discounted. Stories of strange creatures can create fertile ground for imagination, especially among young people. The power of belief, fear and the human tendency to see patterns in random phenomena might explain the persistence of the Owlman legend. Tony Doc Shields, who was instrumental in publicising the Owlman, has been accused of fabricating the sightings for attention. His reputation as a self-professed charlatan lends some weight to this argument, and he was also involved with this Loch Ness monster photo, which again is claimed to be a fake by some quarters. More speculative is the notion of the Owlman as an interdimensional being or an alien entity. The glowing eyes, strange behaviour, and sudden appearance and disappearance could support the idea of a creature that exists beyond our normal perception of reality, slipping between worlds or dimensions. This theory is often linked with sightings of similar creatures around the world, suggesting a connection to a broader paranormal phenomena. From an evolutionary perspective, the concept of a humanoid being crossed with an owl raises some intriguing questions, doesn't it? Whilst such a creature is not supported by current scientific understanding, speculative evolution allows us to at least consider possible advantages that such a hybrid might possess. It certainly would have had enhanced vision, wouldn't it? Owls are known for their exceptional night vision. It's a significant evolutionary advantage for a nocturnal predator, for example. Silent flight. Again, owls have specialised feathers that allow for near silent flight which enables them to approach prey undetected a humanoid with this ability could move stealthily avoid detection by both prey and threats it could be advantageous for hunting or evading predators owls also have acute hearing capable of detecting the faintest sounds and this trait would be beneficial for a humanoid providing heightened awareness of its surroundings and improving its ability to locate prey or avoid danger the talon-like feet would be good for grasping prey, wouldn't they? Powerful wings for flight and a sharp beak could all serve as effective tools for survival, although a beak wasn't specifically mentioned as a feature of the face, I must point out. It might offer a territorial advantage, might be able to defend its territory using aerial capabilities, for example. It could patrol much larger areas than it could on foot. And while all these speculations are purely hypothetical, of course, and not grounded in any biological principles that certainly that I'm aware of, they do offer an interesting lens through which to view this reported creature, don't they? The consistency in the descriptions of these entities, not only with the people who saw the Owl Man, as it were, but with all the similar entities encountered around the world, it does suggest some sort of shared archetype, or perhaps a, a common origin, maybe. Skeptics, of course, offer more mundane explanations, don't they, you know, usually in the form of misidentifications or jokes and psychological phenomena. One prevailing theory is that the reports were the result of hoaxes or fabrications. It could, of course, be a misidentification, it could be the eagle owl or the great grey owl, perhaps, and in low light conditions, the brain could easily misinterpret these characteristics, especially if you're, you know, surprised by it as you're walking through a spooky environment. And the old church does have dense woods and Spooky buildings, you know, it's remote. It provides an ideal backdrop, really, for eerie experiences. Natural elements like mist and shadows and the sounds of wildlife can enhance the feeling of unease, and it can lead to misinterpretations of ordinary events. Of course, there is a critical point, isn't there, here, and that is the lack of any physical evidence to support the existence of this creature at all. There's no feathers, no droppings, for example, no biological material was found. Without tangible proof, the case is just anecdotal, isn't it? It's from personal testimony, and it's inherently unreliable. But it's still intriguing, isn't it? What about its behaviour? What about this head tilt? where it studied them for a moment before taking off. That, to me, suggests it was analysing them. Was it trying to decide if they were a threat? 
it's definitely a sign of intelligence, isn't it? But is this perceived intelligence, or is it evidence of actual intelligence? It's hard to say, isn't it? It might have just been the girls projecting human traits onto an animal behaving unnaturally in its own environment. Or it might have just been a gigantic owl guy. I mean, who knows? It's a strange world, isn't it? What do you think of this one? You let me know in the comments below, please. And I'm quite interested to hear about your own stories, too. And I wonder if you're interested in hearing about my personal encounters with the weird. Let me know in the comments. Hit the like button, please. It's the thumbs up button in the corner. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And share this video with your friends and all that good YouTube stuff. And don't forget, if you haven't seen it yet, you can watch the Mothman of Hythe video here. Bye for now.